Hello, my name is Shawnee Thielen, and I will be talking about how surrealism, Bauhaus, and pop art come together to form modernity. In my introduction, I state my thesis that these three movements hold the key aspects that we have in our society today, which there's three of them. We see this later throughout my presentation. First, we go to surrealism. Below, we can see The Persistence of Memory by Salvador Dali, where we can see that really irrational, unrealistic display that surrealism had. This began in 1924 with the goal to reach the deeper societal world meaning. And when it came to critics, they failed to critique any part of surrealism because of the vast meaning it had. Here we can see my own surrealism art. Monkey Man is a depiction that I hold a meaning to where after humans are gone, only animalia, fauna, and music will be left as it was before. Other people might have different meanings of this imagery, which makes it a great example of surrealism art. Going into Bauhaus, there was a link in between there called Data. Now, Data was an art movement that took everyday objects and made an irrational, just ideological imagery out of them. Below, we can see the bull's head by Pablo Picasso. If you look close enough, you can tell that this is a bicycle seat with handlebars, but he looks at this and sees a bull's head. Now, this links back to that surrealistic imagery. Moving forward, we get a little bit of function into these designs, as you can see by the drying bottle rack. Now, this function leads greatly into Bauhaus. Bauhaus wanted to make design into form and function in the biggest way they could, which was the furniture industry as well as the architectural industry. Now, I tried to jump into this a little bit by creating my own Bauhaus art, which depicts a modern house style. Now, here you can see sort of that really just boxy imagery, and the only colors are white, gray, green, and a little bit of that light beige in the wood. This simplistic colorization led into pop art. While Bauhaus had the architecture and design, and pop art had the advertisement and display, as we will see in a bit here, they both had simplicity and bold color. Leading into pop art, this was a movement that strived to create inclusivity through mass appeal. And they did this through simplistic design, not too keen on the details, but with really simple colors. To the left, we can see Andy Warhol's Campbell soup, which is the same design soup as it is today, and the advertisement to the right. With the simplistic design, it leads greatly into modern examples. To the left here, we can see some old logos versus their new logos. My favorite is the Burger King, and that one I will talk about. So the Burger King depicts a human, and there's many little details, but now the newer one is just simple colors, which leads back into the color scheme that I used a little bit ago. Over to the right, we can see a modern example of pop art with the advertisements in magazines, and I believe that this has a deeper meaning into the feministic imagery, which that leads back to surrealism because of that deeper meaning. So how does this equal modernity? Well, those three key aspects I mentioned earlier that societal art is based off of are art and ideas, architecture and design, and advertisements and logos. For example, in modern surrealism, we can see it heavily into our art and ideas. Here we can see some imagery based upon the COVID-19 pandemic. Over to the right, we see a Cupid fighting COVID-19. To the left, we can see a painting with a deeper meaning on what COVID-19 made us all. Going into modern Bauhaus, Bauhaus style has become the new normal. We see it everywhere and it's increasing in popularity in architecture and furniture. The desk I'm doing my work on is Bauhaus. And lastly, modern pop art. To the left, we can see an example of Ray-Ban's advertisement where they use that bold and simplistic colorization. To the right, we can see a Pop Rocks art exhibit in the pop art style that it is today. In conclusion, surrealism, Bauhaus, and pop art all came together to form those three key aspects that we see most prevalent in our art and society today. Thank you for watching, and I hope you all enjoyed.